Good evening. I'm sorry that I'm online uh, a bit later than normal tonight, but I got caught on the telephone with our local Member of Parliament, Colonel Bob, and those of you who know Bob will know that a conversation with Bob is never a short one, uh, but uh, it would be good to pray for him and for our political leaders uh, a bit later on as we come to a close. This Sunday, uh, we thought as a family it might be good to be able to get everybody together for Sunday lunch. Well, not in uh, reality, but actually by putting our phones and our iPads and our laptops on the kitchen table or the dining table so that we could all eat together. A virtual Sunday family lunch. And it was a great idea, uh, but actually, logistically, it never took off. It was too difficult to work out when everybody was eating. It was too difficult to uh, know uh, how we were going to position everything so we could see everybody. It just didn't happen. And so in the end, Andrea and I sat together at our dining table, as we do every Sunday. And we had our roast because it was a Sunday and it was just the two of us. And, you know, that was lovely. Um, but it would have been far better had we had everybody there on Skype or on Zoom or whatever the platform is that you're using. In fact, it would have been a whole lot better if everybody had been there uh, to sit around the table and to share the food in person. Jesus tells the story uh, during uh, the days leading up to uh, Maundy Thursday and his arrest of a wedding banquet. And uh, it's a banquet where uh, a king sets forth this incredible spread and invites lots of people who then don't show up. And so because uh, nobody shows up and they have excuses why they can't come, this is what happens next. The king then said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. Jesus tells this story uh, in different ways in a lot of different places. And the point of it is that God has set out this fabulous feast for his uh, people for anybody, anybody who wants to come, and he sends out an invitation. That invitation is Jesus, and the calling card of Jesus is his death upon the cross at the end of this week. In dying on the cross, Jesus makes it open for anybody, everybody, to come and sit at the banqueting table if they accept the invitation. But like our um, Sunday lunch, People have reasons why they can't come. We're not going to be ready in time. That doesn't quite fit with us. I can't make the right connection. Uh, my internet doesn't work, whatever it might be. Jesus' invitation to you and to me is one that we should not turn down. In the story here, people don't come because they've got business commitments and family commitments, uh, because they've just uh, done deals, all kinds of things. As we walk through Easter, now is a time for us to hear the Lord saying, do you want to come and sit at my banquet? Do you want to be part of this gathering around my table? Do you want to receive the wonder that I'm laying out before you? Do you want to know Jesus for your Lord and Saviour. Well, I might not be in that place right now. I might not want to think about it that much. It's been OK being on the guest list. That's been all right. It's been OK up until now listening to these kinds of talks. That, that's all right. But I, I don't want it to get too heavy. I don't want it to be uh, too intrusive into my life. I don't want it to be uh, all of those kinds of things which uh, might mean that I have to lay other things aside in order to come. But actually, the feast is waiting. And it's good food. It's good news. It's the offer that God gives to those whom he loves. And that's you. And it's me. We have a chance this week as we prepare for Easter in a way that we've not had for a very, very long time 
to think about what God's offer is to us, what God's offer really means to us and whether or not we want to accept it, whether or not we want to sit at that table. Some of us have been uh, around that table for a very long time, which is fabulous. But maybe for you, maybe for me, we've become a bit blasé about the spread in front of us. We've become a bit overfed on rich food of love from God. Now is a time to reawaken our gratitude and say, thank you. Look at this. Look at what Jesus did on the cross. Look at what his death meant. Look at how uh, he has opened a way for us to go back to God. Tonight, think about that feast set before you. Think about having all your family around you as you eat. How wonderful that would be to have a Sunday lunch again. God says, come and sit at my table. Have Sunday lunch with me. Receive the blessings I've laid out for you. Be a guest in my house. Be a guest in heaven. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, I do want to pray that as we go through Easter this week, as we follow the footsteps of Christ, as we look towards the day when Jesus died and when he rose again, the day when he took our uh, failings upon himself and the day he rose victorious to show that actually our sins were forgiven. Lord, may we recognise the call that he gives us, the invitation to sit and eat with him, and Lord, may we be people of no more excuses. May nothing get in our way. May we be people who gather around the Lord's table and receive from him all he wants to give us, his love and his life. Amen. And let's just pray for uh, our MP and uh, for all in authority. Lord, we just pray for uh, Colonel Bob and uh, his uh, role in our civic life. We pray, Father, for our government and those who make decisions, those who lead our scientific teams and our medical teams. Lord Jesus, we pray that they would hear your wisdom speaking into their hearts and that they would know your love upon their lives. Amen. Shall we say the Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. May the Lord give us rest and may he make us hungry for his feast and for his presence. Amen.